right, next, it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Parviz Moing. Uh, Parviz Moing is the Franklin P. and Carolyn M. Johnson Professor in the School of Engineering at Stanford University. He's the director of the Center of Turbulence Research. His research field of interest include multi-physics turbulent flows, where he uses high fidelity numerical simulations for prediction and engineering analysis of complex turbulent flows. Professor Moyne is a member of the US National Academy of Sciences and of the National Academy of Engineering. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, American Physical Society, and of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Parviz has won many awards uh, and been uh, recognized in many honors, including Fluid Dynamics Prize of the American Physical Society and the Fluid Dynamics Award of AIAA. And with that, I introduce Parviz. This talk is about some uh, new advances that uh, have been made in CFD, which I think is making CFD, especially in the aerospace uh, industry, a viable tool for the, the design purposes. The people who have done the work are Sanjeev Bose from Cascade Technologies and Stanford, uh, Conrad Gock from the, uh, the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and San, uh, Adrian Rosanna Durand, who is now at uh, MIT. The presentation is based on the paper that we are about to submit to uh, Flow. And um, here is the, the, the list of the authors. And uh, the title, again, emphasizes this uh, uh, high fidelity simulations for, of aircraft at affordable cost. Um, I think that, uh, so I will be talking about th this uh, new tools, uh, and I think the flow uh, has the potential, the flow journal has the potential to uh, reach to a broader audience that can benefit uh, from the tools that are developed in the other communities outside of their own uh, uh, community. And it is in this spirit that I would like to uh, share with you this exciting new milestone in computational fluid dynamics, and uh, that is going to be published, hopefully, in, in flow. So we'll be talking about uh, simulation of turbulence, and uh, it has been, of course, well known that its multi-scale nature creates the unique challenges for simulations. Uh, you're looking at the uh, simulation of a supersonic jet through a nozzle, and you see that the, uh, the variety of scales, there is a broadband um, uh, spectrum exists, and the shock waves, shock turbulence interaction, shear layer instabilities, uh, the large scales and small scales, they all are, are present here. Now, what are the methods that are used for computation and prediction of turbulent flows? Uh, of course, the granddaddium of all, is the direct numerical simulation, DNS, which is used and has been used for, for since the uh, late 70s for conducting basic research at, uh, and uh, conducting experiments of discovery, numerical experiments of discovery, uh, and uh, getting insight into the physics of turbulence. The problem with that from a practical point of view is that the number of grid points required and computational resources would scale at the, uh, with the Reynolds number to the ninth fourth power, which in most cases, especially in aerospace applications, in external aerodynamics, which is the focus of this talk, uh, would be out of reach. Uh, the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations uh, has been the main workhorse for engineering uh, uh, calculations. And, uh, uh, but as I mentioned earlier, or alluded to earlier, its accuracy really has plateaued. And of course, the field that is now has been around since the uh, uh, 70s is largely simulation. And uh, that uh, field now, because of the advent of computers and because it has the right limiting behavior uh, with the uh, increasing the resolutions and the computational power, then it has uh, much more uh, hopeful and uh, promising. Uh, it turns out that uh, in 
uh, wall bonded flows, still large eddy stimulation can be quite expensive, but uh, using reduced order models uh, close to the wall, in the very close vicinity of the wall, then the number of grid points become manageable and it's just simple, uh, simply proportional to the, the Reynolds number. Now, what are the challenges in LES? Uh, first, as we move to complex configurations, uh, we need to have numerical methods that can handle complex geometry. These methods have to be low dissipation and robust. Uh, low dissipation because we don't want to interfere with the physical turbulent dissipation. And uh, when you reduce the numerical dissipation or you eliminate it, then of course there is an issue of robustness that comes in. And uh, the best way to handle that would be to uh, guarantee the conservation principles of fluid mechanics. Um, also, generation of uh, high quality grids has been a, a, a pacing item. Again, the typical RANS type grids are not suitable for uh, um, capturing the turbulence fluctuations, pressure fluctuations, et cetera, in a turbulent flow. And uh, there's been considerable progress has been made in this area that I will describe. The cost of the computation has always been an issue with the high fidelity simulations, and that's why it hasn't been adopted uh, readily before as much. And uh, we will talk about with the new uh, computer architecture and uh, with the proper numerics that you can actually get very good accuracy, uh, good uh, simulations uh, with the very modest cost. And of course, the rapid and uh, um, informative data in, a, in interrogation methods are also required. As you do these successful simulations, then uh, we have to have, they, they generate considerable data, amounts of data, and uh, we need to uh, come up with the real-time interrogation methods that I will allude to at the end of this talk as well. In the case of internal flows uh, with multi-physics LES, uh, uh, there has been considerable success going past, uh, going for about uh, two decades. Uh, the Reynolds numbers in these cases are uh, considerably lower than one would encounter in external aerodynamic calculations. Uh, and in fact, uh, it is, has been necessary to capture the turbulent mixing, for example, in the combustion uh, area uh, by uh, high fidelity simulations. One needs to capture the turbulence fluctuations that are responsible for uh, enhanced turbulent diffusivity and the mixing. And in this area, I'm showing you a picture of uh, flow in a, uh, a CFM 56 engine, it's a real engine, and one sector of it has been uh, simulated. Uh, and you see the richness of the uh, flow features that are being captured by the, the simulations, and they have been quite successful. Um, now, what are the recent advances? And I'm uh, going back only five years. Uh, one is the uh, new methods uh, for high quality grid generation for complex geometry that has reduced the time for very complex configurations from uh, weeks, let's say, or sometimes months to matter of minutes, development of low dissipation schemes that actually work with these kind of uh, new, new grid geometries uh, that are consistent with them for multi-physics um, uh, LES, high-speed flows and reacting flows, et cetera. And uh, new wall models, uh, not so new, but uh, they are, uh, are integrated now with these low dissipation numerical methods and uh, which allows us to actually capture high Reynolds number external flows. And um, with the advent of GPUs especially and new architectures and really utilizing what computer science can offer us in terms of running uh, these codes uh, in a very efficient manner and, uh, and have providing the right operators that can work in that kind of uh, environment efficiently uh, that has been the, 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 another one of the uh, important recent advances. 
So briefly to tell you about the, uh, the grid that I'm referring to when I talk about the new advances in mesh generation, I'm referring to the Voronoi uh, meshing technology. But most importantly, uh, the mesh generation or generation of quality grid has been uh, quite rapid. And I'm showing you in this diagram is a, a, a cross section of a grid on a, a wing with the slat and the, and the flaps are uh, deployed and, um, and uh, the grid is of the highest quality and uh, uh, is boundary aligned and uh, uh, we can generate this kind of grid now, even with the, at the rightmost uh, bar, you can see about 11 billion grid points. This is done in less than half an hour. And, uh, and the, the grid is quite uh, suitable uh, for this kind of complex configurations. So this is the, uh, now we move on to the high Reynolds number uh, LES, and uh, I'm showing you a, uh, figure from uh, uh, Conrad Gox's uh, AIAA paper in 2020, uh, where it, it was exciting to see that uh, the calculations, first quantitatively, of course, predicted uh, in that uh, insert over there, you see the, uh, the lift coefficient versus the angle of attack. Uh, the lift uh, coefficient has been over the entire uh, uh, flight profile has been uh, predicted properly, uh, including uh, at the maximum lift. Uh, at the bottom, you see the cross-sectional pressure and a very good agreement, and even post-stall ag agreement with the experiment is, uh, is uh, quite good. And yet you see the richness of the turbulence uh, uh, that is captured. These are very complex uh, flows, the uh, flow coming off the Nostal, for example, is you can see the vertical structures that are coming, and the, you also see the uh, the wake behind the slat brackets, etc., that are all, all captured in the flap uh, the, the same the same way. Um, and this is, shows you another animation of the the, the flow that. Uh, really brand new. These are some of the favorite pictures and you see the turbulent structures that are uh, being captured as, as much as possible uh, here with the slat deployed and the flap there uh, as well. And you see the interesting vertical structures that are uh, coming from the engine side, separated flow, etc. Quantitatively, these calculations are, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, quite good. Uh, um, this shows you the lift versus angle of attack, again, on the JAXA model the, uh, that has been the subject of uh, uh, workshops, AIAA workshops. And uh, similarly, uh, one, uh, the, the, this is a, uh, a drag polar lift and, and uh, drag, again, I, I think is just uh, quite nice. And the nice thing about all of these calculations is that no tuning parameters were used and the calculations were uh, done with the modest number of grid points of the order of tens of millions of grid points only. And that is really what has been the surprising uh, development. If you have the right numerics with uh, low dissipation and the uh, conservation principles are obeyed, uh, then I think uh, you can get away perhaps on some of the calculation of some of the engineering quantities with the relatively low number of uh, uh, few number of grid points. Uh, so th this is a, uh, I want to show you now going back to the cost here, uh, it, what the state of the art was and extrapolating that to the, uh, to the JAXA case, the full airplane case. We have our, some of our own calculations, wall model calculations that were done at CTR uh, at that time, 10 years ago. And that would have been the cost of them if that uh, the, the geometry at that time, which was the uh, uh, McDonnell Douglas uh, wing, would extra be extrapolated to the entire airplane that we are doing right now. And then uh, at this workshop for the high lift 
uh, aircraft. Uh, then uh, you see that some of the RANS calculations, th this is the, the cost of the RANS calculations in, uh, uh, for the, the JAXA standard model. And uh, this is another one with another code for also RANS calculation. And these were the reported times, uh, basically costs that were reported for these calculations. But mind you that these are all RANS and steady calculations, steady state calculations. But the, for the high fidelity simulations, uh, while model largely simulation, using the same parameters essentially, we can, uh, the calculations are uh, with the CPU, uh, with the uh, 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 CPU-based computers, that would be the, the cost. And now when we now have uh, go to the GPU-based, of course, the cost becomes very insignificant. On the, uh, with 2,000 cores on a, um, what JSM, we're talking about uh, with the steady RANs for, uh, we were talking about of the order of uh, one or two days for the calculations. And uh, now with the, with the uh, with Charles, with leveraging GPUs, we can uh, we get about 10 times the speed up. So this is a matter of hours now in a day that we can do these calculations. And again, back to the grids, we do the grid for this case less than 10 minutes and uh, uh, for this kind of a resolution that was, was used here, whereas some of the uh, traditional uh, uh, methods might require anywhere from 12 hours to uh, uh, 12 hours to, uh, or weeks. As far as the key takeaways, on the status of the high fidelity simulations in aerospace is that now, and that was the surprising that uh, we can get accurate results without tuning with fewer degrees of freedom and uh, lower time to resolution to solution than we uh, thought would be possible say five to seven years ago. Uh, this has been made possible by a formidable combination of low dissipation numerical methods. I cannot uh, underestimate that, that numerical methods are very important here and the modeling of the subgrid scale and wall modeling, and of course, high performance computing. That would allow us to do the calculations within uh, a few minutes. If I have a minute, I wanna refer to the report that came out of NASA. Uh, this was prepared uh, uh, seven years ago. It came out and it was about the uh, pacing items in predictive modeling of the, based on the Vision 2030 report from NASA. And they point out that, uh, pointed out that uh, if one wants to move toward certification by analysis, certification of aircraft by analysis, uh, these are the, some of the breakthroughs that were, were required. This was about seven years ago, and I think uh, uh, many of them, uh, one, two, three items, multi, the physics modeling, wall modeling in separated flows, uh, building high quality grids in complex geometries, uh, uh, efficient and scalable utilization of next generation computer architectures have already been, been realized. 